Hi, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of Sage Makeup Friday Season 4. Uh, this is episode number 10, right? So my name is Julian, and I'm a dev advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. And once again, please meet my co-presenter. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Hi, everyone. My name is Sigolen, and I'm a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. My role is to help customers get their ML project on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. Thank you again for being <laughs> with us. So where are we now? Um, so last week we started with our uh, AutoML mm -hmm. uh, track. And so this is episode two, right? So we keep exploring uh, episode two of, of the AutoML part. Um, <laughs> and um, in fact, we are revisiting Exactly. Uh, um, a data set that we used in episode two, uh, right, on August 13th, where we built a classification model for uh, fraud detection mm -hmm. to detect fraud on insurance claims. Okay, mm -hmm. so way back in August, we worked with the data set, prepared it, uh, trained the model mm -hmm. uh, using, uh, using SageMaker. And this week, we're going to use the same data set but we are going to use AutoML um, to build models, right? And not, uh, not our notebook code, just like we did previously, okay? So you'll find the code for uh, this episode in, on GitLab in, uh, in this repo, okay? So go and, go and grab it, you can run it yourself. Um, and if you, uh, if you watched last week's episode, we actually used, uh, we, we focused on SageMaker Autopilot, right? which is uh, the uh, AutoML capability part of Amazon SageMaker. And we gave you a quick glimpse at an open source library called AutoGluon, okay? Mm -hmm. So this week, uh, we're going to take a quick look at uh, AutoPilot again, mm -hmm. and you'll see it's the exact same code, which is pretty cool. <laughs> we're just changing the data set, but uh, the, the rest of the code is really the same. Uh, and we'll spend more time on uh, AutoGluon and assembling um, and uh, discussing those cool techniques. Okay, um, so let's take a look at Autopilot first. Okay, really quickly. And our data set. Okay. So um, this is the insurance claim data set mm -hmm. that we used last time around. Okay, and it's, it's, it's a small data set. It's only uh, 5,000 rows. Okay. And we have Mostly categorical features, mm -hmm. okay. A few numerical features, and of course, we have a label that tells us uh, yes or no: is it's this fraud, fraud, right? Zero, no fraud. One, fraud. fraud. Okay. Um, so we have this uh, claims data set, and then we have a customer data set with additional information on on each customer, right? Uh, age range and uh, where what state the policy was uh, signed in, you know, zip code, etc., customer education, a few more things, and to join those two uh, those two files, those two data sets, we use the policy ID, idea. right, which we see here. Okay. Perfect. So, simple data set, lots of categorical features, labels, and so we can build a binary classification model once again to predict. Yes or no, is this uh, insurance claim uh, fraudulent or not? Okay. Um, so the, the only thing we, so we are not doing any data prep. Again, if you watched last week's episode, you know that uh, Autopilot takes care of that, right? Uh, <laughs> we looked at the, the data processing script and everything. Um, so the, the only thing we want to do here, of course, is to join those two data sets. You can simply do it like this, right? Join them on, on the policy ID. Um, and so that basically we, now we have a single data set with everything, right? So uh, we have uh, driver information and claim information and, uh, and the label is in there as well. Okay. And we could do it as, with data wonder. Yeah. So here, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're joining with pandas, uh, but you could, uh, you could do the, do it in many different ways. You could load the data set in SageMaker data wrangler. Uh, as those as two different sources and and join it there. Uh, somebody pointed that uh, uh, on, on YouTube. So thank you for 
for the ID, absolutely, yeah, you you could uh, you could do that uh, in Wrangler. Well, you could do it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I just like pandas. And we showed uh, data Wrangler uh, in detail already. So, but anyway, it's fine. At the end of the day, we have this data set. We save it to a CSV file, and we upload it to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, remember, you can use SageMaker uh, Autopilot in two different ways. You can create an Autopilot experiment directly in the UI, giving it a name, passing the location of your data set, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then either, the using, the yeah, yeah. either using the auto type so that Autopilot automatically figures out, hey, this is a binary classification problem, or you can say it is a binary classific classification problem and I want to use yes. this particular metric, okay? And do you want to deploy the best model at the end? Yes, right. Okay, and then just click on create and off it goes for a little while, <laughs> okay? So we, we've done this before, you know, it's there's nothing uh, super difficult here. Um, and once you've done that, you know, you end up having uh, an auto ML job, which you can find uh, which you can find here, okay? Uh, so this uh, this is the one here, okay, that I ran previously. Okay, and if you just right-click and describe it, you get all the information. So mm -hmm. obviously here it's complete. If you had just started it, um, you would see, you know, blinking lights for a little while and, and some information on, you know, what uh, step, what phase the job is, uh, is it currently running. Uh, but okay, this is what we get after uh, maybe an hour or so. Uh, we get lots of tuning jobs, and the best one, highlighted with a star, mm -hmm. has reached uh, an area under curve of points, yeah, let's say point sixty nine. Okay, yeah. which which is quite good. Which is quite good. Which is quite good. It's a small data set, so okay, it's promising. Okay, um, and that's all we've we've done. Okay, now that's all we've done. Put the data in S three, fire up uh, this autopilot experiment, wait for a little while. And then uh, we have this this model. And point sixty nine is is definitely a good start. Um, that really tells us yes, there is predictive power in mm -hmm. this data, and yes, uh, it's uh, if if a human expert, if a data scientist starts looking at this and keeps tweaking, we're gonna get much. If, yeah, yeah. If we, if we find something. <laughs> yeah. So if, that's a really good way to if you have a hundred problems or hundred data sets that you need to look at. You know, AutoML is a really easy way to fire up all those jobs and then look at the most promising ones and obviously focus your efforts on the problems that you are most likely to solve, right? So it's a good, uh, it's a good filter. Of course, if you had a hundred problems, you would not click a hundred times, <laughs> right? What you would do is uh, you would fire up um, uh, jobs using the SageMaker SDK, which is as simple as this, okay? Um, pass uh, a role, an IAM role, which is just the same, the SageMaker role to access, to give permission to access S3 and so on. The name of the column that you want to predict, mm -hmm. okay? In our case, it's called fraud, okay? Zero or one. And then problem type, you could pass auto, so. right? So again, it could be as simple as this, right? Uh, maybe, maybe there's a capital yeah, there. I think yeah, capital yeah, yeah, I think there's a capital, but, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the same thing here, right? <laughs> you never know about this. Or you can say, hey, I want binary classification and um, and I want you to use AUC, AUC and I want to use 250 jobs, uh, tuning different jobs, which I think is the default. Okay, you could increase it. You could decrease it, um, but I forgot to mention it last week. Uh, if you start decreasing it, obviously you give fewer opportunities oh, yeah. uh, to, auto, to autopilot for um, for optimization and performance tends to go down pretty rapidly. Okay, because we remember we have ten pipelines, so ten different um, uh, ex experiments or ten different uh, attempts um, at modeling and and feature engineering that are running in parallel. So. If you start um, um, lowering the number of candidates, you, know, you, you really, really My end up having very few uh, jobs per pipeline, and that will hurt performance, right? If you want to try and increase it, you, you can go, but generally, you know, I don't think you want to set this to 2,000. Mm. I think uh, maybe try 500, but I don't know. I wouldn't go much higher than that. 
Okay. All right, and then you call fit, passing the location of your data, and you know again, one, off it goes, blinking lights and models. Okay. Perfect. All right, so quick summary really of uh, of what we've done uh, last week. Um, if that was too fast, please go and watch last week's episode, <laughs> and um, you will see all this stuff um, in great details. details. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, what we'd like to show you today uh, is. Um, Okay, 0.69, that's fine. And, and last week we saw the candidate generation notebook that gives us access to the actual feature engineering code and training code. And we can keep tweaking and, and we can actually run the experiment again. And of course, you know, with business, uh, with domain knowledge and, and data science expertise, you, know, you will start to improve this, right? But there's another way um, and of course, I'm referring to autogluon. Okay, and again, just as a quick recap, if you didn't uh, follow us last week, okay, uh, autogluon is an open source project by Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go and read the the research paper. It's it's very readable, even for mm -hmm. noobs like me. A uh, really good one. You can find everything on uh, on GitHub, and this is based on MXNet and the Gluon API. And basically, we can do AutoML for tabular data. Okay. Uh, NLP computer vision. Uh, we have lots of different algos and we're going to look at some of those today. And more importantly, we have those ensembling techniques. Okay. So we'll go back to ensembling in a few minutes. Let's just look at the, how the little code you, you, uh, uh, you, you need, need to write. Okay. And it's really, it's really very little code. Okay. And then we'll talk about ensembling and <laughs> what those things are. Okay. So let's close this. Okay, so make sure uh, you have MXNet installed. Mm -hmm. um, here I'm using a CPU-based instance. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the CPU uh, version of MXNet. If you, um, if you have a GPU instance, you should install the GPU version of MXNet, which is called MXNet CU92, right? As far as I know. That's what the MXNet website says. Okay. So I'll trust that. Of course, we need uh, auto glue on and some widgets for progress indicators and, and other funny things. And we need S3FS uh, because that's how uh, so S3FS, as the name implies, is a way to read objects directly from S3. And this is how uh, glue on actually loads mm -hmm. uh, objects, okay. right? Data sets. So we need that. Okay. Fine. Uh, import pandas. <laughs> load our two uh, files, claim CSV, customer CSV, same as before. We join. join them, mm -hmm. same as before. Um, yeah, save to CSV, upload to S3, same as before. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so this is how things start, right? <laughs> um, so, of course, first we need to import the data set. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, that path here is the S3UIR. Okay, so that's why we need S3 FS to be installed. Okay, uh, you could load you could load locally, locally right? Locally, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, but uh, here, since I'm using that same file for autopilot and uh, and glue on, I put it in S3, and I'm not going to lose it. it. Stays there. But yeah, of course, you can load locally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we create a predictor. Uh, saying, hey, my column to predict <laughs> is called fraud, and the metric I want to use is uh, rock AUC, and there are plenty more. Okay, mm -hmm. just go and uh, take a look at the glue on the lots of different metrics to uh, to train on, and then uh, you just call fit. Okay. Oh yeah, this tells us models will be saved in a local path. And you can you can customize that as well if you. Want. We'll take a look at that later. And then you call fit passing your Training data, uh, okay, which is really the, the tabular data yes. set. Uh, time limit, okay. Here I went for two hours because why not? Um, and um, and we'll see that um, Gluon allocates that time um, across the different uh, algos that are used. Okay. okay, so sometimes you'll see you know out of time you know. Uh, Moving on, pretty much. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it tries and allocate uh, that time in a, in a smart way 
so that uh, you know you maximize chances to get uh, good models. Presets. Uh, so that really says, okay, how, how are we training here? Are we going for best quality? Are we going for fast inference? Are we going for okay. different things? Maybe we'll look at different settings in, in the next uh, episodes. Okay, here I want the best quality. And we can decide to exclude some algos. Um, so again, I, I'm nothing against KNN or FastAI, just as an example. Mm -mm. If you uh, if you wanted to exclude you know neural networks completely because you know they tend to be uh, longer to train, you, you you could do that. Okay, and that's it. Okay, and then you just launch this thing. So what happens next? So what happens next? Let's look at the log. So first, problem discovery. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is a simple one here. <laughs> so uh, my problem is binary because because my label uh, value, my label column, which is fraud, only has two values, zero, one. So it's quite likely I'm trying to... So Tobion detects it yes. automatically. Okay. Detects automatically. If it's not the correct type, we could Please go and value. say, hey, no, 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 I want to do multi-class or I want to do something else. Okay. Fine, uh, so we map the labels to classes, and then of course we do um, data prep, okay? And, you know, this is quite similar to what Autopilot does. We're going to, uh, you know, look at different columns. Uh, we're going to uh, detect the types, mm -hmm. right, of each column automatically. Uh, we'll get back to that in a second. It's really important that we get that right. Uh, we fill missing values, uh, we deal with um, uh, categorical features, etc., uh, etc. Et okay, and so we see how those types were uh, detected originally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we see floats, ints, and a few objects because we have strings. Mm -hmm. Right, object means really means string here. And so what's important is really to check this bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, because some categorical features could be integers mm -hmm. in the data set, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, it could be, you know, if you had maybe state, you know, uh, I don't know, Texas could be one and uh, mm -hmm. New York could be two, and and, you know what I mean? And be, Arizona yeah, could be three, etc. So uh, they could be encoded like that. And and so the um, auto glue on and any other auto ML system could could think yeah, well it is an integer value mm -mm. and it's really not okay because if 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 a certain state is encoded with value two and another state is encoded with value four mm -mm. you know th that second state is not twice the mm -mm. first state there's no sense of scale okay so the problem with this is you create a sense of of scale you create a, a an a relation, an ordering relationship that's just not there. It okay, exist, yeah. so some algos will be troubled by this, some won't, but you know, just generally, case, yeah. yeah, generally, you want to make sure if it's a category, it stays a category, right? So, here, you know, driver relationship, incident type, collision type, anything that says type should be really a, a category, and if we look at Integers, you know, number of vehicles involved, number of injuries, number of witnesses. Of course, we want to look at everything, right? And um, and we can actually uh, we can actually display uh, that metadata um, and, and make sure for the data set and make sure it is actually correct. Okay, um, and we can also we can fix it if mm -hmm. we want it. Okay, so instead of saying, "Hey, uh, I'll let you detect what those types are," you can force it. You can pass a schema. And I'll, I'll show you this probably in the next episode. Okay, super simple. But this is really important. Okay, um, so I guess the lesson here is yes, AutoML is smart. Yes, AutoML is powerful. But you know, there's no silver bullet. If you pass lots of floats, lots of integers, and they actually mean categories, well, either either you know process your data to to make them look like categories. You know, maybe assign strings. Mm -hmm or pass a schema that says, hey, these are categories, right? Um, the other ones look, look okay, I think, right? Um, and yeah, this one is a Boolean, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so Thanks. yeah, I've noticed large increases in accuracy when uh, moving uh, int columns to category columns, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, immediately, you know, jump in accuracy, just because 
you know, you're helping the model figure out, oh, these are different dimensions mm -hmm. and not some scale. That, continuous. Yeah, things. continuous scale that just doesn't exist. Okay, fine. So then we process the data. And of course, here it's super fast because we have a, we have a small data set. Okay, and then we start training stuff. Okay, and immediately we see, oh, stack oh. levels, L1, and, and ooh, lots of L1, Bag. and bagging, bagging, and oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so something is happening here, yes? <laughs> so before we jump and, and look at numbers, we need it's to so explain sorry. what's going on. <laughs> Okay, so you used a few words that I think we need to define, uh, boosting, bagging, stacking. Mm -hmm. um, and these are really different things, but we'll find all three techniques in, uh, in Gluon. Okay, so, so let's go and, and try and define that. So boosting is, is really, um, and I'm going to call it an algorithm feature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it's built in XJBoost, LightGBM, CatBoost, etc. Right? Um, that's what that boost thing means. Okay. <laughs> So we train, uh, so we use the same algo. So let's say we use XJBoost and we, we train on a, the same training set and we train a first model, mm -hmm. okay? And we evaluate it. Mm -hmm. And it gets some predictions right and some, some predictions prediction wrong. And then we train um, a different, uh, a different uh, model mm -hmm. that tries to fix those mistakes. those mistakes, okay? So now we have two models and they try to complement each other. But we still have some mistakes, right? So running, uh, you know, optimization techniques, we train a third model that tries to fix those mistakes and maybe a fourth and maybe a fifth, et cetera, et cetera. So in the end, we have a sequence mm. of models that are all trained together in the same training jobs and optimized together that end up being, you know, very efficient mm -mm. because they, you know, mm -mm. they just uh, fix each other's mistakes, mm -mm. okay? And when you predict, you predict with all those models and, you know, that was one of the big uh, advantages of XGBoost when it came out. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. It, 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 it uh, kind of, uh, you know, did this very, very well. Okay. So again, different algos do that. Uh, so it's kind of built in. Um, there's nothing to do, right? If you use XGBoost, it's going to use boosting. Right? So don't need to, to do much. I guess you can control the number of trees you want to, yeah. you want to, uh, build and, and some, some yeah, crazy hyperparameters, but it's going to do that. Okay. Now, bagging is different. So bagging, we train um, different models, usually with the same algo. So mm -hmm. let's say we run 10 XJBoost training jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and of course, we train them on the same uh, problem. So okay. we start from the same data set. But um, instead of training on the exact same data set, mm -hmm. um, we split that data set into, let's say, 10 chunks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say we take nine for training, one for validation. Okay, and we use different chunks for each training job. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we have 10 models that are trained on a different subset and evaluated on a different subset mm -hmm. of our initial data set. Okay, and we combine their predictions. And you sh one technique is a weighted average, but there are others. Oh, there, yeah. Okay, so it's re really different from the previous one, right? Boosting is really one training job building a sequence of related trees. Okay, here we have, let's say, 10 training jobs, 10 different models trained on different subsets, and we combine them explicitly mm -hmm. at the end. And this uh, is known to improve predictions. Okay. And the, the last technique is stacking, mm -hmm. okay? And it's exactly what the name says, and it's even crazier. So here <laughs> we take independent models. So let's say, you know, we take our best XJBoost model, our best CatBoost model, and our best neural network mm -hmm. model, train on a, a subset of the same data set, right? And we combine them, mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, you cherry pick your models and, um, and they predict in parallel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you use the output, so you use the predictions from those different models as, in, as the input to train another model, right? And I, I'm going to call it meta model, but I hate the word meta. So you know what I mean, right? I will show you a picture in a second. So the predictions become an input and we train another model, right? So we take the hopefully the, the 
best qualities from all those uh, base models and we train another model to really predict it better okay um and, and this is really this is what it looks like okay and then we'll look at the code so the input layer here is really it's the input data set mm -hmm. and we train those base models mm -hmm. right and we'll see in fact that gluon uses bagging here mm -hmm. okay so each one of those is already a bag model okay that we concatenate throughout the outputs mm -hmm. okay so the predictions and we train level two models so they are trained with those predictions as input mm -hmm. okay trying to predict the, the correct result. And again, we use, so we train a layer two, mm -hmm. okay, second layer of, of models, okay? And again, we'll use bagging for that, mm -hmm. okay? And finally, we have, uh, uh, we, we built a, a level three weighted average, and this gives us the output. So you can see this is a radically different technique from what we've done before, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've trained standalone models, we've used hyperparameter tuning, which eventually leads to standalone models. But here it's completely different. We train lots of models, right? Um, which use boosting internally. We apply bagging uh, uh, in autogluon and we apply stacking. So the model that we get in the end is a combination of the best models, uh, which were trained at level one and level two. And now you're thinking, Oh, this Why? is insanely complicated. <laughs> Why would I want to train all those models? No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. No. So now let's see how we do this uh, in Gluon. Okay. Really, really easy, as you can see. Okay. So let me go through the screen here. Let's look at this log again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because we train a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So feature preparation, we're good. Now, Auto gluon will fit two stack levels. Okay, so what that means is we're going to trade lots of bad models on layer one. On, on layer one. Uh, we're going to take the best and use them to predict. Mm -hmm. And all the outputs are concatenated, and this becomes a new training set for layer, layer two, two models. Okay. okay, and eventually we do the same. We pick the best layer two models and we average. The results and that gives us the layer three the final layer three model okay okay so we exclude KNN and fast ai just to show you how to do that and so now we have 10 algos left maybe let's let me zoom in a little bit okay so we fit 10 l1 models because we have 10 different algos okay so we can see we have light gbm xt light gbm r r variations on random forest right. uh, cat boost variations on extra trees xj boost neural net in mxnet uh, and light gbm large okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to train all those jobs and we use bagging okay okay so that means the training set that we have gets chopped uh, a bunch of chunks go for training or a bunch of chunks go for validation okay. and we use different combinations all the time right um so that's that's what we do here and so we see the the metric for each of those uh jobs okay training time etc etc okay and it's already very interesting i think uh we can see uh that the the best in this in this round right the best model is cat boost which you know uh, well, it's called cat boost because it does well on categorical, categorical. data. Huh? And well, okay, this is just one example, but okay, indeed, right? And uh, I think the next best one is probably like and GBM, GBM and uh, yeah. XJ boost is a little lower. And yeah, random forest not doing great. But anyway, it's 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 fine because we're here, you know, we we totally accept that some of those models are not going to mm. be great because we're going to train lots of different bags and we're going to take the best. Okay. And yes, it's a long log because we are bagging 20 times. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so, so we actually have 20 different subsets for training and validation data. Okay. Okay. So it's a small data set. So of course you know, it goes, you can see training times are in seconds. So that's fine. Um, yeah. If you have a bigger data set, 
uh, maybe 20 bags is, is too much, right? But anyway, and, you know, and, and we can see, you know, we get over time, you know, we can see we now we get into, you know, the 67s. So these are better models, right? Yeah, and we're not going to look at all of them. So because we do this 20 times, so I'm going to scroll rapidly. <laughs> all these are layer one models using our uh, 10 algos on different bags. OK, and then and then and we see, yeah, we see we have some neural networks. Of course, these are longer. OK, because I'm running on CPU. Right. So and the IOC is improving, right? Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, we see, yeah, there's got to be some optimization happening because generally mm -hmm. it goes up a little bit. OK, uh, and OK, yeah, that's iteration 20. OK, now, OK, completed 20 out of 20 K4 bagging rupees. Mm -hmm. So now we've trained, OK, um, let me show this thing again. We've trained all those Just base models. Much. And I've actually trained 20 bags for each algo. OK, make sense? Makes sense. All right, so now, now we move into level two. So we take the best mm -hmm. bagged jobs, OK, mm -hmm. and we train. Uh, so we have a weighted ensemble first. And then we train 10 L2 models. OK. OK, so we do the same. These are the same algos, except this time we're not using our original data as input, we're using the concatenated outputs Good. for from the, the Leo, best L1 Leo bags, one. Okay. right? See? And here we go again. And and you can see, you know, we start we start to see ensembling right. at work, right? Because mm -hmm. immediately we're jumping, you know, uh, in AUC, you know, 0 0.72. 72. Because now, you know, we have all those cool L1 models that have you know different qualities that we combine and, and you know, train uh, with. Okay, and some are not great. Okay, this one's not good. Okay, that's all right. Um, okay, and again, we repeat this 20 times, right? So 20 L2 bags with our 10 uh, algos, so that's 200 jobs, right? All right, so let me scroll again and again and again. All right, 13, 17. Again and again. All right. Okay, and so we <laughs> have completed 20 out of 20 bagging L2 jobs. Okay. And now we take the best. Okay, and we build a weighted ensemble. Okay, so we're at the top of that pyramid here. Okay, so we have our 20, uh, we've completed our uh, 20. Or 200 bags, bags, bags yeah. L2 jobs. We take the best, okay? And we compute a weighted average, and now we have the final output. Okay. And did you see what we get? Beautiful. <laughs> we get. Okay. 0 0.8. We get 0 0.8 AUC using this, cool. which is. Starting to be cool territory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah? We start from what? 0 0.6? Uh, so autopilot, uh, autopilot did so yeah, 0 0.69, 69, okay. which was OK, more than OK. OK, and now we're, we're actually doing literally nothing, mm -mm. OK, using uh, default parameters mm -mm. for everything, right? We didn't tweak uh, the, the data schema. We didn't tweak any yeah. of the glue on parameters. Uh, we didn't uh, even unleash hyperparameter optimization because, of course, you can do HPO on Gluon as well, auto Gluon. But using really default settings, you know, we have 0.8 AUC, which is which is pretty good. On the very right? same data set, yeah. On the, yeah, on the exact same data set. So different techniques. Okay. And this ran for, uh, yeah, this ran for um, maybe an hour and a half, something like that. Okay. So... That's that's auto auto gluon and of course you can print the leaderboard. Okay, so that's obviously the hopefully the L3 <laughs> model is the best. Otherwise something went wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um we see the total training time, um we see uh prediction time and that I guess the price to pay mm -mm. because nothing's free, right? 
you could say, oh, why don't we always use assembly? Well, because now, <laughs> if you're predicting, um, so I think by default, we use 25. We'll see that parameter. Uh, you can control how many L1 parameters, how many L1 models, excuse me, and how many L2 models you actually built into this uh, pyramid. Uh, I think the default is 25. So if we're predicting, we're really predicting 25 times here and 25, 25 times here, here plus all the messy stuff in between. So it's going to be a little slower than predicting with a single model. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. But for some use cases, it's no big deal, right? Mm -hmm. If you do batch prediction, you don't care. You know, if it takes 200 milliseconds to predict, you don't care, exactly. right? And you want maximum accuracy. If you were obsessed with, you know, response time and low latency, and it, you have to strike a balance between accuracy and, and, and prediction time. And this is what those, uh, so you can control this with, you know, by reducing the number of uh, L1 and L2 models. Mm -hmm. You could exclude some algos, you know, some algos are, uh, I guess neural networks are slower to predict with than mm -hmm. the, the, the tree stuff. Um, or um, or you can use those presets, right? And best quality probably means tons of parameters everywhere and just, you know, go crazy with uh, just <laughs> ignore any performance and speed <laughs> uh, problem. Just predict the Should best, best you can. one. <laughs> okay, so find a balance, but, uh, and we can see, um, yeah, interestingly, the best L2, uh, the best L2 uh, bag was, you know, a neural net. Yeah, people tell you, oh, neural nets don't work on tabular data. Hmm? Think again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the best L1 was like GBM. Mm. Right. And see, um, neural networks were not so fantastic on, uh, on on at level one. They were they were actually beaten by all the uh, fancy uh, boosting yeah, algorithms. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing. It's like you don't know, right? Never know. You, you don't know. You don't know which algo is going to work best mm. uh, with uh, each data set. And actually, data scientists spend a lot of time experimenting and trying all those mm. algos all the time. So not only do we do that here, we also automatically combine them in many, in very clever ways. Mm -hmm. So if you had to do this stuff manually, I mean, you know. Good maybe, luck. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm not, not excited. <laughs> Not excited. I'd rather fire this up and <laughs> look at the results and, and keep tweaking, right? Uh, so lots of interesting stuff here. Yeah. Lots definitely. of interesting stuff, right? Okay. Uh, and all right. If you have, if you call this fit summary uh, uh, API, you see a little more. So that's the leaderboard yeah, again. Exactly. But yeah, you see. Uh, yeah, you see a few more things, right? Uh, yeah, bagging use. Etc. Etc. Model. Yeah, there's a lot of information, right? Yeah, tons of information. Um, yeah, max base models, etc. Etc. Tons of stuff. Yeah, go go and have fun with that. Okay. So the next thing we probably want to do is uh, you know look at the models, predict and uh, evaluate them, and you know, I'll show you how to predict them. You know, I guess next week. Um, but you can you can look at the models uh, here. Uh, so there's a summary. Uh, I'll show you how to build this. Uh, there's a, an API code for that. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. So we see a graph showing us uh, performance versus latency, mm -hmm. right? So exactly what we said. Yeah, and again, it's a uh, yeah. So okay, so this is the L3 model here. Obviously, it's the best, but it's uh, so it's time. it's it's yeah. The, the, the latency, inference latency is, it could be a little too high. Mm. I'm guessing for mo most people it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. but some use cases really, really need low latency. So you could say, well, the next best thing is this, actually. Um, you know, a little less. But if you, if you, you know, you could say, well, maybe this one is good enough. You know, um, let's, let's close this thing here. Um, maybe this one is good enough for me. Right, like mm -hmm. GBM bag L2. Maybe the accuracy is fine and you know latency is already almost half. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And you can see these are really not, uh, not really super interesting, but maybe those three 
you know, are a good compromise if your uh, if your latency is a problem for you. Okay. And okay, now we can see all those models here. So if we wanted to predict with our friend uh, weighted ensemble L3, here it is. It's a pickled object. Pickled so we object. can load it and predict with it. And, uh, and yeah, but we'll probably do that in the next episode. Okay. All right. So that's a uh, first, uh, first look at, uh, at Autobion. Yeah, a more detailed look. We'll keep, we'll keep uh, digging. There's really good stuff here. Um, I would love to try and uh, see, you know, what we can do with NLP or computer vision. So, oh. okay, two more episodes. Maybe we do one of each. I don't know. Let's see if let's see if I, I have time for that. But uh, I'll try. Okay. okay, I'll try to show you the different uh, different angles. Okay, so uh, well, I think we're at time. So um, um, summary for today, you know, autopilot, super simple, one line, mm -hmm. yeah, two lines of codes, uh, two lines of code. There's fire up your jobs on managing infrastructure. You know, scale doesn't matter. Nothing to worry about, and just you know, either you know, get a baseline for for all your jobs, or you know, explore your data sets quickly. Find the ones that are most promising, so that you can keep refining, uh, tweaking with the generated notebooks, etc. Uh, and if you want a slightly more um, um, involved uh, technique if you're if you're uh, if you want to spend a little more time Autoglon. then autoglone is very interesting you know it has a larger selection of algos uses and sampling techniques uh but bagging once yeah things. bagging etc and um, stacking but if you uh, there's going to be a little more work on on ops uh -huh. okay because here it's open source so there's no infrastructure um, uh, managed for you i'm running here on studio directly in my notebook because it's a small data set but if you need to scale this, if you want to fire 100 jobs, then you're going to need some some sort of uh, tooling uh, to fire up the jobs and, and not run them in notebooks that mm -hmm. could time out or die. Or, yeah. and, and logs need to be saved. So next week, we'll look at that, uh, actually, how we can run um, an auto gluon in SageMaker processing, which you all know by now because I've discussed it uh, 622 yeah, exactly. times. <laughs> My favorite part of Every SageMaker, time. I guess. <laughs> You know, running batch jobs, and of course, we can install all the glue on there and fire them up. Okay, okay. so we'll look at that. Segro, thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Julian. Looking forward to uh, diving into uh, assembling a little more again and different use cases. I hope you learn uh, a few things, and um, we'll see you next week. Yes, yeah, with more episodes. And until then, have a great week. See you soon. Bye bye. bye, -bye.